Good morning, my friends. It's me again, your favorite denture wearer. Sure hope everybody's doing okay today. Trying to go down the steps here. I want to show you what I did. I cleaned up our yard. You remember the last time I showed you our yard, we had a bunch of sticks out here. A bunch of limbs out of the tree. And I had them in the fire pit. And I was burning them. And I was standing right about here in the yard. And I saw a fire and rescue pull up in front of my neighbor's house. So of course I came around the front here because I thought maybe something happened to my neighbor and I wanted to make sure everything was okay. And I walked around the front and they had, they had kicked in our door. You can see where they hit it with the battering ram right here and, and why they would hit it there and there instead of over here and you can see the footprint where they kicked it it's a good solid steel door but here's some pictures of the damage they did now i was a little upset but i didn't raise my voice i didn't yell and cuss and swear i came around here and there was like Two fire trucks, fire and rescue, like 10 cops. They were all parked up and down the street out here. What amazes me is they didn't have a single siren going. I never heard them coming. Now, when I walked out here and I saw that they had the front door busted in, I'm like, are you serious? I'm burning some sticks in the fire pit. I mean... <sighs> Are you serious? You're kicking my door in because I'm burning some sticks in the fire pit? Now, I'm not a professional firefighter, but I would have assumed that if you pull up to a property, you don't see any visible smoke coming from the property. You don't see any visible signs of fire coming out of the house. You don't see any smoke through the windows or anything or smoke coming out of the attic or anything else and all you see is a little stream of smoke in the backyard i would think maybe send someone around back obviously we have no gates so it wouldn't have been hard for somebody to just come around back to see if there's any visible signs of fire and would have saw me burn in the fire pit before they busted down the door. Now, with all that being said, we fixed it temporarily. It's not a permanent fix because they said that uh, I have to get a hold of risk management and risk management will take care of the door. So, because it was a false alarm and they busted down the door without any actual proof that there was a fire here. Now, I understand that people are on high alert, number one, because of the coronavirus, and number two, because we just had an earthquake. So I don't blame the person that called 911 because it was on uh, a Friday, you know. People are home because of the coronavirus and stuff. And, you know, somebody panicked because they saw smoke and they called 911. I don't blame them. It's nice to know the neighbors care. You know, and... I don't blame the firemen for busting down the door if they actually thought there was a fire. But that fire pit wasn't putting out any more smoke than a barbecue grill. Or a smoker or a car that runs bad. There was very little smoke, not enough smoke to justify professionals that are supposed to be trained to just drive up to a house and bust the door in without checking first to see if there was visible signs of actual fire before they just bust the door in. 
Now with all that being said, I'm hoping they'll uh, send out somebody to replace the entire door and the door jam and everything else because they need to because it's all out of whack now. And uh, I wanted to clarify something else too while I got you here. I did a video the other day talking about my health issues and how I was slowly starving myself to death and I said it was two years but it wasn't because when I first moved down here to Utah uh, I was in really good health and I was able to go out and do odd jobs you know I would go to day labor a couple days a week or my neighbor over here you know if, if uh, people needed help you know, I'd, I'd get a hold of some tree services and I'd work for them a couple days a week or whatever to make extra money. So I was eating just fine the first year I was here. It was after I pulled this, it was after I pinched this nerve in my neck last year that I started, you know, basically eating hot dogs and bologna because I couldn't go out and do side jobs anymore to make that extra money that I needed to eat properly. So it's only been a year and it's nobody's fault. It's, you know, it was my choice to, you know, I bought that, uh, I bought that uh, motorbike, you know, that wrecked motorbike instead of buying decent food. You know, I, I let things, I let other things take priority over my food, over my health, but I didn't realize that I was going to become unhealthy in as much as I did in that year. So, you know, I'm not blaming anybody. It's nobody's fault. It was my choice to buy that, you know, that go-kart to try to turn it into something that I could take out to the desert and have fun with my brother. It was kind of like I was caving into peer pressure. You know, my brother bought a sand rail and he bought a quad and he bought a go-kart for the kids and stuff. And he's like, dude, you really need something to, you know, come out and have fun with us and stuff. You really need something. So I was thinking, you know, well, you know, maybe I could build a sand trike or a sand, a little mini sand rail or go-kart or something to go out and have fun in the desert. And instead of spending my money on food, I was buying hot dogs, bologna, chili and noodles because it was quick and easy, dirty meals and, you know, just quick, easy, throw it in the microwave, you know, and then it becomes habit, you know, it, it starts to become a habit. You're like, well, I really don't feel like cooking, so, you know, a couple hot dogs sounds good. Throw them in the microwave, it takes one minute. You throw them on some buns and you eat them. You know, a handful of chips and, and you're done, you know? And, you know, or, you know, you're like, well, I really don't feel like cooking, so, you know, fuck, I'll just eat some bologna sandwiches, you know? And none of that's good for you. It's okay on occasion, but it's not good to, to make a steady diet of it, but it becomes habit because it's quick and easy and dirty meals. I call them dirty meals because they're not good for you. So it was my fault. I'm the one that chose to spend the money on buying that engine. I'm the one that chose to buy that go-kart frame. I'm the one that chose to buy some pipe and stuff like that and start buying stuff to try to build that go-kart. But I thought I was doing okay, you know? I mean, shoot, you know? go to the store, buy some bologna chips, chili and noodles and some hot dogs and I'm good for a couple weeks and you know, I can, I can buy some parts from my, my little buggy, you know? And that was my mistake. It was nobody else's fault. I just didn't manage my money properly. But recently I started thinking about things and you know, and I started when I was talking to my doctor and she was telling me that I'm basically slowly starving myself to death because I'm not getting any nutrients at all, hardly. Not only do I have the issue with having the diarrhea still, which limits me on my nutrients, but I also was eating really crappy food, which wasn't helping. Yes, I would eat an apple, you know, I eat, I eat apples pretty much every day, but apples aren't enough, you know? I have gotta have some fresh fruits and vegetables in my diet, I've gotta have some protein in my diet, you know, I got to have good fats in my diet and things like that. So I don't want anybody thinking that it, you know, was anybody else's fault but my own. Um, you know, I'm not blaming anybody for my stupidity. I want to make that very clear. It's nobody's fault but my own. I was the one that was being stupid and, you know, and caving into peer pressure thinking, well, you know, I can go ahead and buy bologna and hot dogs this week and buy a seat for the go-kart, you know, and... Oh, I can go ahead and buy some uh, bologna and hot dogs this week and that'll save me enough money to buy some pipe. 
uh, well, I'll buy some bologna and hot dogs this week and that'll give me enough money to buy some tires. You know, it, it was my own stupidity and caving into peer pressure. I really, you know, basically I was trying to please my brother. And I've never done that before in my life. I've never tried to please people or tried to, you know, I don't know why I let that get into my head. You know, but it's like when I decided to sell that engine and buy this little truck, I thought, you know what, I'm going to, I need a vehicle and instead of spending money on something that's going to take me a year or two to build and starving myself to death in the process, you know, I'll buy this little truck. It'll be paid for. I won't have to, oh, I don't owe anything on it. It's already paid for. I can afford to buy real groceries again. And start eating properly again and things like that and I told my brother I said you know I'm really not into the whole sand rail thing and and going out and playing in the dirt I've done all that in my life I've I've played in the dirt my whole life I've always had motorbikes and three-wheelers and you know sleds and things like that I've played in the dirt and I've done all that my entire life I've done that but I had the money to do it I could afford it I can't afford to do all that crap now and I'm not really into it. I'm 53 years old. I don't need to be breaking a leg or breaking an arm or, you know, I don't need to be doing that anymore. I enjoy riding my bike on the pavement, you know, going on rides and things like that. And, and uh, you know, I needed a vehicle. So I sold that engine, used that money to buy the vehicle. So I'm not out any extra money. And uh, you know, so I can start buying better groceries. And like I said, it's nobody's fault but my own. I mean, yes, the nerve pinch put me in a bind financially because I couldn't go out and make that extra 100 or $200 every week, uh, you know, which is a pretty good bite out of your income when you can't go out and do that anymore. That takes a pretty good chunk of your money away from you. And... And that was okay because I could still afford to buy decent food, but I, I chose to do other shit with my money. So I don't want anybody to think that it was anybody else's fault. It was my fault. I was the one making the decisions. I should have been the one smart enough to know that I was limited on my income now because of the nerve pinch and that I needed to buy groceries instead of trying to build a sand trike or a sand rail, you know, because everybody else is doing it everybody else is buying sand rails and sand buggies and you know razors and things and i wanted to be part of that but i don't need to be part of that i told my brother i said i can come out to the desert with you and i can take videos i love doing videos it'll benefit my other channel and it'll benefit his channel so i can be the videographer and I'll have more fun doing that than I will be playing in the dirt, getting filthy, and not being able to take a shower for three days. <laughs> so that's where that's at. I just don't want anybody to think that it was anybody's fault but my own that my diet turned to shit and that I was starving myself for a year. I don't want anybody to think it was anybody else's fault. It's not my brother's fault. It's my fault. It's nobody else's fault. It's my fault. I'm the one that made the decisions. I'm the one that let other things get in my head and get in the way of me buying healthier foods. You know, so anyway, I don't know if this video is going to be of any interest to anybody or help anybody, but, uh, you know, I just thought I'd share it. I hope everybody has an amazing day. Never forget to keep smiling, keep trying, and whatever you do, never give up.